Okay, everyone, welcome back to Relationship. You already know what it is. It's your host, Cami Crawford, but today I am joined by Bad Bitch Extraordinaire. Okay, the most incredible, the most amazing, the most fly. Wearing that outfit. Period. A Chang, a Gutu. Yeah, baby. Welcome, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cami. Obviously, if you're listening, you can't really see, but if you are watching on video, you can get into this look right now. Let me let me fix my Yeah, yeah. It's giving. It's giving. The I look had is to looking. come. I I Cami was like, I want you on this podcast. Mm-hmm. I had to come through with the energy. Yes. Period. Yes. And you do it every day and you do it so flawlessly. And like I started following you during quarantine, and I've seen, your numbers are insane. Like you are doing numbers. We're trying out. You are doing numbers, <laughs> but it's just like a testament to how much I think that we, as people, as women especially, need to hear your message and like all that you're about. So we're gonna get into that, obviously. But the first question I have for you. Ask me, babes. It's very, very important. We love to hear it. Tell me. What is your sign? Oh, I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Can you fit? Wait, you're a Scorpio too. I did didn't I? know that. I, no. I think but we talked about this. I don't know if we did. Are you a Scorpio? Yes. Ah, uh, as in it makes sense then. When's your birthday? November 13th, baby. <gasps> oh, a November Scorpio. You're, are you so November? you're a real Scorpio. A real Scorpio, like the OG, uh-huh. legit, yes. original. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm October 25th, so I'm like, I'm, I'm legit. You're legit, but you're legit. But I'm, we, on no, the, no. I'm on the... On the precipice. I know, but we op- we like accept you with open arms. Right. Yes. I, I feel like a Scorpio true, like through and through. I do. As in, do you, I feel like you also give major Scorpio energy because like even mm-hmm. on the show, like the way you talk about like relationships and like you call out people, I'm like, yeah, that's my Scorpio mm-hmm. sister. And I honestly, <laughs> I think that being a Scorpio plays a part in like your self-confidence. It does. I don't know if a lot of people can relate because, you know, there's just... Something about a Scorpio, because like we're a fixed sign, you can't tell us shit about shit. You can't. So even if we feel badly about ourselves, there's nothing that you can really say to like bring us down. You, no, nothing really. As in, I feel like if somebody ever fixed their mouth like this, I wish you guys could see this, but mm-hmm. like this, to tell me shit, I tell me like, oh, you ain't this, you ain't this, please collect yourself and leave. Yes, exactly. Collect yourself and self. Like I, I've worked so hard to get to this like, power mm-hmm. to get to this magic this essence that is mm. so come on vibrant. whiz kid come yes. on essence. essence come on tams <laughs> yeah. yes this essence. you know like there's nothing you will tell me that will bring me down mm-hmm. baby nothing mm-hmm. it's, and so let's talk about like where that comes from because i know you're from kenya born and raised babes hailing mm-hmm. from kenya what was kind of like the the catalyst to your bad bitchery when did you actually come into your own and like or have you always been just like this naturally the bad bitchery did not start until i actually left kenya so um Mm. in kenya i was living a very different life i was living a very like um conservative secluded life i lived in this bubble my parents wanted me to not see anything bad in the world Mm. and so i lived in kenya for 16 years of my life and sort of like believed like that was my role in society like i was just supposed to be quiet and like just like you know be just gentle and so small yeah um and i think my parents did that because they wanted to protect me in their eyes that's what they saw as like protecting my child and my daughter from any of the crazy madness that happens in this world but once I moved to the U.S., um, everything changed. Mm. <laughs> I was in a different space. I was um, experiencing different things, learning new new um, ways of living and just like um, expressing myself. Yeah. And I think my bad bitchery actually started um, three years after I moved into the U.S. I had been in a relationship with crusty somebody's ooh, child somebody's ooh, crusty ooh, offspring ooh, ooh. it's always the crusty it's offspring. it's always the crusty off- offspring that uh, starts the the journey yes and so i had gotten out of that relationship and was feeling so broken and so sad and felt like my worth only belonged to this this man mm. um and it took a lot of of therapy and a lot of um being by myself to love myself to realize like baby girl you are the prize okay <laughs> the value comes from you you are worthy you are magic period yes. and i think that's sort of where my journey started like listen ain't nobody gonna tell me anything about myself mm-hmm. i am amazing mm-hmm. i'm the queen mm-hmm. i'm the elevation of creation come on elevation period of creation yes. i love that yes because these i mean 
these relationships can really a relationships <laughs> can really take a toll on not only like your mental health mm-hmm. but your self-esteem just in general and especially like when you want a relationship to work so badly and it doesn't there's no relationship that i've left as as confident as i feel standing here right now or sitting sitting here right now Mm -hmm. there's no relationship that i've left that i haven't looked back and like had some level of self-reflection and asked myself like was it me yeah you know did i do so like what is it about me why this didn't work out and then i i snap out of it eventually but i think that we all have that in us where we're like what did i do or what could i have done differently and sometimes it's good to like have that introspection and be like what could i have done differently Mm -hmm. but sometimes shit just doesn't work out it just doesn't and i think um what has stopped me from like really asking myself like was there something wrong with me is that when you're going into that space whether it's the first date or even a relationship like you're trying to figure out like what do i like this person Mm -hmm. do i see myself with this person instead of like oh my god i hope they like me i wonder if they like me like baby no what about you how do you feel about them like where do you see yourself in all of this and i feel like that's like sort of like stopped me from getting into that negative space because back to back to back i was having weird relationships where like we're in it and then they pull out or Mm -hmm. they're in it and then they leave and i'm like oh it has to it has to be me yeah like i'm the common denominator here like Mm. they're leaving me but me realizing like i'm putting myself myself in like situations where like the energy the vibes the the love whatever is not reciprocated right right yeah and i really wonder sometimes too like does the other person think about this as much as I'm thinking about this right now? Like, are they thinking about how they fucked up? Um, I feel like <laughs> I'm gonna say this is just how I feel or Kurt. <laughs> say how you feel. Say how, how you feel. feel. Um, men. Uh-huh. I don't think men have that introspection. Mm-mm. No, they don't. Um, and it has to be a man who a man who is like so in tune with themselves, mm-hmm. like knows like this is what I'm bringing to the table. This is where I'm at. I'm giving myself into this situation because I know I'm ready. Yeah, preferably um, a man in therapy. A man in therapy. We love a man in therapy. <laughs> we love a man in therapy. If you're a man in therapy, call me. Um, <laughs> uh, but. I feel like men don't have that conversation. Sometimes when I'm having those thoughts, I'm like, I hope he's sitting with his friends as well and thinking, he Girl, ain't. he ain't. He ain't. He ain't. He ain't. <laughs> have you seen that meme? <laughs> that meme that's like, don't post the quote, sis. He doesn't care. I know, no, I know. It's like, literally, like, stop posting that quote Leave on that quote Instagram alone. and go start that business plan. Get your ass off Pinterest. Get your ass off Pinterest. Like, yeah, you never love me, but I love... Girl, he don't care about that. But I'm guilty. I'll be on Pinterest. Like, quotes about breakups. Quotes about being disappointed. Quotes about... Tammy, I'm imagining you screenshotting that. I do, and I delete it right away. That's just when I'm in my feelings. In your feelings, like, tell me. I know it's like, you lost a bad bitch, but I'm better without... Ah! But then I delete it because as a Scorpio, I don't like people in my business. I don't like, I don't, you in my business. No, don't do don't that. Do that. Don't do that. I got to delete that shit. I'm like, uh, 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 uh. I can't post this. I can't. They will know. Literally. Everyone will know. No, I know. I, that's something I used to like fall into. Like I would be interested in someone now. I'm like, I'll shoot my shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I was interested in someone, I'd be like telling my friends and they're like, you should tell them. I'm like, then they'll know I like them. Yeah. I was like, isn't that the plan? It, yes. Theoretically. Theoretically, but no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your input. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> I definitely, growing up, was like, if I had a crush on somebody, I wouldn't tell them I had a crush unless I knew that they had a crush on me. Yeah. But can you, sometimes, can you tell? I feel like sometimes I can tell. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Okay. I know, you know the energy. You know the energy. You know yes. the vibes. Yes. <laughs> you know yes. the vibes. Period. You can just tell. Can and tell. I'm all for shooting your shot. I think that that is like something that women need to do more often. Period. Shoot your shot. Shoot your shot, baby. What's Be the alive. worst that could happen? Like what? Literally, what? Like the world will not end. No. If they say no, and then you move. At Shoot least your you know. Else. Like period. There's move. plenty of fish in the sea. Plenty. Not all of them are good. Not all of them are good. Some of them are catfish. I know the sea. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, be careful. They are among us. But okay, so back to life in Kenya versus moving to the U.S. When you moved to the U.S., did you move straight to Boston? No, girl. Who, girl? I moved to Indiana. Oh. Oh. And, and oh, <laughs> yeah, I moved to Indiana. I don't know if anybody who's listening to this has been or lived in Indiana, but it's quite an interesting place to be. That must have been a culture shock. I know. Quite. To the, to the, to the gut. To the gut, to the T. Wow. Yeah. So I moved to Indiana, but for me, like, that was like, oh my God, I'm moving to the U.S. Like, yeah. 
it didn't seem crazy at that point until I just started experiencing life there. Like, I would look around and I'd be like, whoa, I'm literally the only black girl in here. And that's the thing, because, like, obviously, you know, coming from a different country, like, my, my family comes from Jamaica, so... Mm beauty standards in other countries are so So much different different. than they are in the United States. And like an example that I like to give a loose example is like the Miss Universe pageant. Mm -hmm. You watch the Miss Universe pageant and you see all different, you know, bodies, like not all different body types. It could be, could be better, (laughs) but like, you know, girls from different places have curves that are celebrated Mm -hmm. and like, you know, different skin tones and it's totally different. So how do you maintain that confidence or or try to you know boost your boost yourself a little bit coming from a place where beauty standards are one way mm-hmm. and then moving to the United States where they're drastically different. It was really difficult because I felt like I had to be that beauty standard that I was seeing mm-hmm. in like when I moved to the US, right? So I felt like I had to be like super skinny and like had to have like a certain type of hair and had to talk a specific way and all these things. Yeah. So it was so difficult. And there was no one around me at that point that was really telling me like, yo, no, you don't have to do that. Yeah. You don't have to do that. You can just be you. Fuck that. You're fine. Yeah, fuck that. Like you can be you. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. So at that point, I just felt like I those people who are always commenting on like, oh my god, your nose is so big, it's so different, or like, oh your hips are so big, or your belly is so big, and all these things. And literally, if I show you a picture of myself at that time, you'd be like, girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? It's always when I look back at pictures of myself from like middle school and high school when I thought that I was like fat and I ugly know. and disgusting. I'm like, bitch, are you insane? Are you insane? Literally. What happened? Like the fact for me in that point, I never thought there was anything wrong with me. Yeah. Right. But and it, it, there was nothing wrong with me. But the fact that people were commenting constantly mm-hmm. like it was something wrong. It made me feel like, oh, they must be something that's wrong with me mm. for me to have like a big like a nose that I have or like for me to have this kind of hair or or dress like this or talk like this like they had to be something wrong because everybody was commenting on it right because they couldn't relate they couldn't relate and that's that's really i had an ex-boyfriend who once told me that um i think it was probably one of the best things that he ever said (laughs) in the relationship that like i could remember but he said people don't like what they don't understand yeah Oh, and wow. it's the ch- it was so it was so prolific. I By the way, he was like a mute, and I barely he barely said <laughs> shit the whole relationship. But like that was something that has stuck with me till this day. People yeah. do not like what they don't understand. They can't relate. I love that. And like we see it now. We talked about this before, like on social media, when you are so unapologetically yourself, which is an act of rebellion as it is. Mm-hmm. People who can't relate are angry they always have something to say they're livid livid they're like how is she so confident how is she so beautiful and so smart and so talented and so amazing and so this and so that and i'm not Not those things yeah and it's only you're only not those things because you're not even trying to put in the effort and i the thing i hate is that why is the the response to that negativity Mm. or like hatred or Mm. like bashing someone like why can't it, why is it why can't it be something different? I don't know what it could be, inspirational? but inspirational, like, inspirational, ah, motivational. Wow, wow, <laughs> you said that. <laughs> wow, ah, ah, yeah. Like, why can't what? it be that? Like, why do you have to be hating? Right, exactly. Because there, I the first time that I ever saw one of your videos, I was having a, a down day. I was down bad. I was in the bed. <laughs> I was in the bed. It was like eleven thirty. I missed like all of my morning things that I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I just was not like in a good. I was in the sunken place. Literally oh in my God. pillow. It's, it's hard. That's and it. I'm scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> Somebody had posted you and I watched your video and I think you literally said like, get up, get get, get dressed, ass. like get ah, do some. And I was like, like all oh. right. <laughs> like, Let me get my ass out of this bed. I'm done with this. Like, you know, and that's motivational. Yeah. I didn't look at that and be like, oh, she's so happy and she's so beautiful and she's dressed up and she's so cute. And like, I'm just in the bed. I hate her. Let me let me write a mean comment. <laughs> like that's not the first thing that would come to my mind. Mm-hmm. It's so sad, and it's taken like some time for me to like really like get to the point where I don't need to listen to those people. Mm-hmm. That is a reflection on you, baby, and mm-hmm. not on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I know what I bring to the table. I know the value. Mm-hmm. I know who I am. Yeah. And if my space, my energy, my vibes can get to you at this point in your life, that's fine. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's fine. And you know what? I'm also a person who I don't want to ever put you in a place where mentally you're fucked up because you're watching anything that I'm doing or you're feeling down about yourself because of anything. I Unfollow. Unfollow, Unfollow me. Simple. 
unfollow me i don't want to affect you and your emotional state and your bad bitchery if that's if it takes you unfollowing me for you to unlock your bad bitchery then i want you to do just that leave make your exit exit sign (laughs) make your exit (laughs) well how are you handling though because like your platform has grown really really fast Mm -hmm. and we've talked about it a little bit before but you know for the listeners because i know they want to know like how do you handle the negativity at first it didn't really bother me as much because i was just like doing my own thing Mm -hmm. and then it got to a point where it was it was becoming a like quite a a lot yeah and i was like what am i doing something wrong am i offending these people is my message not reaching to these people until i realized like babes like that their negativity and what they're saying has nothing to do with you Mm -hmm. and baby girl now i got time Mm. i got time to troll you Mm. the same way you're trolling me and actually no can be i called you when i called you and i talked to you about this and you're like girl this is what i've been doing i was like okay god this is exactly what i every day i like to drag people okay it's a scorpio (laughs) trait it trait. really is a Scorpio trait. Because I thought like it was like bad that I was doing it. I was like, listen, I've got time for you today. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, recently, I've been like writing like, thank you so much for your comment or your observation. Mm-hmm. Um, a team member will be back with you in touch, <laughs> like in touch with you like <laughs> shortly. Love management. Like I'd be saying member. that. Yes. Literally, yes. I'd be doing that. Or like make be, them even more make mad. Them They're even like, Damn, more this bitch bad. Got They're a like, team? <laughs> you got a team? They're like, I'm waiting for them. You better wait. <laughs> <laughs> you better wait. You um, will be waiting. And like some of them that like actually like kind of hurt me is when women come at me mm-hmm. you know at first i was mm-hmm. like when men say like oh put on this i'm like oh whatever fuck you i don't give yeah. a fuck but when m- women come at me mm-hmm. because my whole thing is about like really empowering women and making women feel like amazing and right. powerful and loved and then a woman comes up at me and say like you should be more quiet you don't have to shout or like i li- I, li- I recently oh. got this this little inches period inches. love it i got a, i got a new platinum wig y'all yes and um somebody sent me a message saying like she didn't even do it right you look so bad in that like you're ugly and all these things and i was like feeling like i shouldn't like say something but i was like how about you send me a message when you get your wig and i said thank you bye if you want a wig just say just that just say that if just you want to get your hair done, just, just say, that. say that. Send your Venmo. Send your Venmo, baby. I'll send you the coins. I'll send you the coins. <laughs> you the coins. <laughs> what? Yeah. Imagine being upset because somebody got a new wig. I know. <laughs> Girl, you are down bad. You, are you need dead. to do something you with yourself. You need to do something with yourself. And I think, yeah, at this point, I've just like noticed that like people are going to have to say, or people are going to say something regardless of whether you're doing mm-hmm. something good or bad, they're mm-hmm. going to have something to say. Mm-hmm. All right? So I'm just going to live my life within that magic. Yes. And you can dance around me. <laughs> you move can around. move around. <laughs> move it's like, around. Fine. It's your turn. Say what you got to say. Next. You? Exactly. Okay, great. And, like, I... I don't have time for that, but I do have time for that. It's like a mix. I will make time. I will make time to drag I you to the same way you came into my page mm-hmm. onto my tantalizing mm-hmm. sexy parts of the internet mm-hmm. with your negativity. Mm-hmm. I'll come back at you, baby. Mm-hmm. And you know when I love to you. drag people the most is like when I'm on the toilet. Because <laughs> something about taking a shit <laughs> and, shitting and, on dra- and shitting on people <laughs> just brings me joy. I don't know it, why. It sparks joy for it's, me. It's a very, I feel like I should try that. <laughs> it just sparks joy for me. I'm like, wow. But then, you know, you'll have people like your supporters who will be like, why do you even give yeah. this your energy? But yeah. I'm like, it really doesn't take much. It really doesn't take much. Like at all. Yeah. I've got time today. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not saying that you should do it. I'm saying that that's what I do. That's what you do. Uh, I'm not saying that I will do it, but I will do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because I I also see my page as like my house. You know, this is my home. This is my living room. And if you're going to come into my living room and take a shit on the floor... I am going to drag you the fuck out of my house. Like, yeah. you don't get to just stay around here with the rest of us playing nice and drinking and having a good old good time. time. Yeah. You can't just be doing enjoyment things when you shit on my floor. I'm going to drag you out. You got to leave. Now you got to leave. leave. You now need you, to leave. <laughs> you need to leave. leave. <laughs> now you can't participate <laughs> in, the, in the fun. In the fun. You messed it up for other people. I do have a few questions. Before I get to that, I, I want people to know what your message exactly is because it's yeah. very clear to me because I've been following you so I get in anyone who doesn't know yes. a Chang period baby the way <laughs> that you have just completely taken over the the empowerment movement I feel like not just women benefit from it but everyone anyone who watches can feel good about themselves especially when it comes to body positivity yeah. so was there a particular turning point where you were like, actually, I'm going to accept my body regardless? Or have you always felt very confident in your body? 
Um, I don't think I've always felt confident. And there was definitely a turning point um, when I was really trying to fit into this like little piece of something that society said, you've got to be in here. Mm -hmm. You've got to look like this, be like this, talk like this. And it was so hard. Yes. It was not even more than hard. Like I was losing myself. Mm -hmm. I was literally getting sick for nothing, for the approval and the validation of other people who didn't give a fuck about me. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. No. Never. No. I said, no, thank you. No. And like when I realized that I was losing myself and actually getting sick to a point where I was like, literally, I could lose my life mm. to try and impress people. I said, it's that's it. Yeah. That's it. Like this life is too short. I have one tantalizing life on this earth and I'm going to live it for me. Yes. And stop feeling like I need to like not eat this morning or I can't eat that or I can't talk to that person. And this is. No, I'm going to live, I'm going to do me. I'm going to live my life. Yeah. And it's taken some time. Um, I think my first step was therapy. Mm. Um, and it was really good to process my my feelings and my experiences and my trauma with somebody who could be able to help me. Like, there's so much that your girlfriends can say to you. Like, right. girl, fuck him. Right. Or like, do this. You, you look great. Man. You look great. <laughs> there's so much your girlfriends can do for you. But like, shout out to all the, the bad bitches, bitches out there, like supporting their girls. But mm-hmm. there's only so much like, people in your life can do until you really need that help right it's true because i i do believe like obviously you need to have a a group of people you have to have people in your corner who can you know help gas you up when you need some gas Mm -hmm. you know we all need those friends and like if you don't have those friends in your life you're gonna have to find some because sometimes you know we can get in our own heads but i also believe that happiness is an inside job yeah it really is and i agree with that it has to come from within nobody can compliment i have friends who i compliment them all day every day they still have insecurities same for me like there's still going to be things that your friends your you know romantic partners your work nothing can fulfill you have to be the one to to pour pour it back into yourself so therapy listen if you're not in therapy, let me tell you something. And I, I'm, I've been the biggest advocate for therapy for someone who just started it a few months ago, but it has transformed my life. It really like, has. Have, were you in therapy back when you were in Kenya or did you start when you moved to the States? I started when I moved to the States. Therapy in many African households is seen as like not mm-hmm. necessary. No, they're like, pray to God. They're like, pray to God. It's like, you're in depression, yes. pray. Go I'm, depress these dishes. I know, go depress these dishes. Literally. Literally. Literally, my mom, yes. <clears throat> we've had this conversation with my mom, and, like, that conversation is starting to change in our household, how we view therapy. But, like, there's so many times just in the family where I talk to some of my other friends, and they're like, I'm anxious and all these things, and I'm depressed. And it's like, when I tell my parents, they're like, pray, anxiety mm-hmm. will leave you. Oh, my God. Anxiety is not for I'm like, Yes. You know, so Caribbean households are the exact <laughs> same. The exact same. They're like, oh, you're depressed? Here, drink this uh, tea. Drink this it's got some ginger in it. It has some rum in it. Take a nap for five minutes. And you're good. Be gone. <laughs> what? What do you mean? So, I therapy and like sort of like viewing my mental health as like a priority to me started when I was in the US. And honestly, it happened when I graduated from my college. And that's sort of when it's my journey started yeah and with my journey on like social media and like sort of bringing bringing this part of myself onto a larger platform started when i was um during the pandemic and Mm -hmm. i was in a healing journey and i felt like i wanted to share that with a bigger platform and like more people and i felt like kind of like alone at that point even though i was like with people around me i wanted to like meet more people and like extend my my joy to like people around the world and like that's kind of where it started and I'm glad I did because it's like turned into such like a powerful, magical thing. And it brings me joy every single day. Like right now, ah, I'm just so happy. Girl, I'm just so happy. You yeah. make ma- the joy is felt. Girl, okay. Thank you. Because when you slap that belly. Period. I'll be slapping my too. As you should. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, slap your arms. Normal. Get it. Normal. Literally. Belly, normal. normal. Why like, can't we normalize it? I, society is so tied to it though and I think it's been so hard like honestly the backlash I've gotten from people even people in the industry mm. is insane mm-hmm. I'm like you sh- like I you support support whatever you want to support yeah but literally somebody out here in this space like literally just trying to normalize what normal bodies look like yes. what normal people look like and you come in to bash that yes for what for what for what what how are you happy are you happy right well because so from my perspective like i've been 
a size size zero to a size 10 and everything in between. Mm -hmm. I'm a size 10 now, happily. And I'm the healthiest I have ever been in my life. So you can't judge people. I don't believe in numbers. I don't believe in any of that shit. If you love it, if you're wearing it and it looks great, it looks great. It doesn't matter if it's a size two or if it's a size 20. Mm -hmm. If you look fabulous, you look fabulous. But I've realized that like a normal body is whatever is normal for you. you. To like you. to to you, you. <laughs> <laughs> to you, literally, because uh, you know there are people who are a, normally a size double zero, and if you can rock that dress as a double zero, rock, rock it. it. Like there's nothing, there is nothing abnormal about you. What is not normal is trying to fit into a box that That's, is not yours. Yeah, this is your box. Yeah do that and i think that's exactly what my message yeah. is mm-hmm. it's like whatever you are in this spectrum of whatever bodies life mm-hmm. living like you don't have to fit into this box that society has made for you yeah you you be you yeah whether you're a size zero or size 14 size eight, whatever you do you baby yes you live yes. in that, revel in that magic. Lavishly. Lavishly be in that. Effortlessly. Mm. <laughs> you know, like, I want to put you in, like, a Build-A-Bear teddy bear. And just, like, every time With every time little, I'm feeling low, you, like, press the, press the paw. <laughs> You'll be like, baby. Baby. Bestie. Yo, Build-A-Bear, send me the contract. Please. Please. We would love that. We would love, <laughs> we would love that. The girls need that, okay? Okay, so I want to get into some questions that people have asked okay. about self-love and self-care Love and that. self-acceptance and confidence there are a lot okay. like literally Jesus scroll, scroll 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 oh scroll 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 so okay <laughs> let's get to some let's see one person asked how do you get deep into your self-love bag while still being attentive to your partner so that's an interesting question because i don't have like a, a like a serious partner but i have a, a partner oh like a human who lives in my life. Like, we, we are in each other's lives. Mm. Um, I think... We'll get into that we'll next get into that. time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so, self-love has been very commercialized. Like, it's it's very, like, you should take, a, a like, a bath and, like, go buy yourself mm-hmm. this and oh take that God. trip and all that. And if that's what self-care looks like to you, that's fine, mm-hmm. baby. But for me, self-care has really turned into this, like, what my body needs, what right. my body really needs right now to like function it at its best. Right. And that's like literally waking up in the morning and being like, I am so tired. Like, why am I tired? I just had rest. Like, maybe you need more rest. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to eat. Maybe you need to take that shower. You need to talk to someone, whatever. Um, for me, that's what self-care is looking like right now. And that's what is allowing me to be so present in all spaces, mm-hmm. including a space where I have a partner who like I'm, we're both dedicating our times to each other and like parts of our lives to each other. Yeah. And so I think it's just a matter of you deciding like, what does that self-care look like to me? And what does it um, mean for my body, my soul, my spirit right now? Yeah. It doesn't have to mean you need to be spending that money to buy yourself a bag. Maybe save your money. Mm. Save, save your, your money. money, cook yourself a homemade meal. Mm-hmm. Save your money and do this. Or spend that money and do this. It's right. what it looks like to you. Right. And realize, um, like, yeah, recognizing how that can, like, add to your space so that you can be able to, like, give back. Right. Yes, right. you got to pour into you pour first into before you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't, you can't. Although self-care to me sometimes does look like going to buy a bag. Um, um, I know, yeah, it, it'd be like that sometimes. It'd be like, that, be like that sometimes, you know, like yes. if that's what it looks like to you, like, yeah, it's like yes. specific to each person. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's you just sitting down and being like, opening yourself up and be like, what do I need right now? Mm-hmm. Like, whoa, yeah, I'm exhausted, I'm tired with this and this and this. Yeah, I should take that trip. But I or, love that you, know, you say that like self care is very commercialized because when I think about like if I'm having a fucked up day I'm and right. somebody tells me I should go take a bubble bath, I'm like, so I can sit in a hot <laughs> tub of my own fucking misery? <laughs> no, no, thank you. I would rather like, or they're like, go for a run. I'm like, I don't want to go for a run. run. Like it, it really is for <laughs> what is best for you. Yeah. But that's the, that doesn't work for me. I yeah. get anxiety if I take baths for too long. No. Like I start getting worked up and Literally, I sweat. I sweat. And then like <laughs> there's one time, okay, there's a few times I'm like, oh, I'm going to take a nice bath and the wa- bath is warm. And then I do champagne. Ha! Uh, Dehydration. Yes. Immediately. Take yourself. Now I got to pass out. Now I'm going to pass out. It's like no self-care was no. done here. No, no self-care. Yeah, so self-harm. Self-harm. Self-harm was done. <laughs> 
<laughs> this was not me taking time yeah. for myself. So I agree, though. Like, the yeah. more you pour into yourself, the better you can be for everyone around you. Yes. But you can't be good for anyone around you if you're not being good, good to yourself. yourself. You have to do that first. Yeah. And figure out what being good to yourself look like mm-hmm. looks like. Like, you can do this, baby. You've got this. We're proud of you. We love you. Mwah. Mm. Mwah. We love you. Let's see. How do you stop comparing yourself to women and beauty standards on social media? Ooh, I did that for a long time, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I would look at so many women and be like, why don't I look like that? Why don't I have that opportunity? Why am I not in that space? It was so bad. Self-comparison and comparison is a disease. Yes. It's a freaking disease. Yes. And I think that stopped when I started realizing that, like, I'm amazing. I'm a bad bitch. Period. Right? I'm the creme de la creme. I'm the prize. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm bringing so much to the table and you can't take that away from me. Yes. And that doesn't take away from anybody else. When you realize that you are bringing worth to the table, that you are worthy of magic and power and all these things in the world, you Preaching. are worthy of a whole entire nation bowing down to you. The congregation said, Amen. <laughs> then you start showing up into spaces as like your highest self mm-hmm. and realizing that your power doesn't take away from another woman's power another yes. woman's power doesn't take away from your power and that you can be in the same space doing bad bitchery shit and that's on period period poo you know? it's the truth it really is the truth because i'm one of those people who believes that what is for me is for me amen but i have definitely been at certain places especially in my career where i'm like damn it's not even i don't even look at somebody else succeeding and be like why did they get that and Mm -hmm. i didn't get it Mm -hmm. i'm more so like man i would have loved to have done that Mm -hmm. like i i would love that for myself but guess what then i have to remind myself bitch it's not your time it's not your time when it's your time it will happen yeah and if it's meant to be it will be Mm -hmm. but that's their moment right now Mm -hmm. so let's congratulate them let's applaud them let's lift them up in that moment give them their flowers it happens all the time it happens all the time i really really wanted catfish to be nominated for an emmy this year Mm -hmm. and child i prayed on it every single night (laughs) i was like please (laughs) lord like what do i have to do do i have to stand on the street butt ass naked (laughs) like what do i have to do oh my god sis and we didn't get it We didn't get it. And you know what? That happens sometimes. We submitted. We didn't get it. And then I watched all the nominations come out. And I was like, oh, my God. I really, really wanted that. But guess what? It's not this time. It's not this time. But it will happen. Yeah. And I think that as long as you have that in the back of your mind, that you will be the best version of you. Mm -hmm. Put the time in. Mm -hmm. You also don't know if the people that you're clocking on social media are the best version of them. Yeah. Yeah. You don't Straight even know down. if they like themselves. Literally. So just remember that the things that we see on social media are not always exactly what they appear to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. And baby, like your journey has its own path. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it will come. Your time will come. Mm-hmm. You know, give the other people around you their flowers and their roses. And yes. baby, when yours comes, you'll be like, God, mm. die. It's going to be overflowing. It's going to be overflowing. <laughs> yeah, sweetheart. I love that. It's be true. gentle with yourself. Mm-hmm. Be kind to yourself. Yes. You've got this. Yes. Much love. We also have a lot of new moms that are like trying to get, you know, their confidence back after post baby and like, I don't have any kids. I don't have any kids either. But what I can tell you from the bad bitch moms that I know Mm -hmm. is that as difficult as it is, because you're pouring so much into this new life and like that's, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. I think that it's also important to try not to think that this one moment is going to be like the rest of your life Mm -hmm. this is a a new baby a new a new new experience and relish in it enjoy it i'm sure you're probably like bitch i haven't slept in fucking days (laughs) okay i haven't showered in two i have throw up in my hair listen i i was helping my cousin when she just had her new her second baby Mm -hmm. And I went for like five days. Do you know I had throw up in my hair for three of those days? <laughs> I passed a mirror and looked at myself like, and I was like, what is that? Cr- oh. I said, I am a mother. I am a mother. I am a mother. I'm a mother. <laughs> I'm a mother. I was like, what? <laughs> this is what it's like. This- I'm like, oh my God, I'm not ready. I'm not ready because hats off to y'all. The things that you have to do and the way that you have to sacrifice. <laughs> that's how I know I'm not ready for kids because... I'm I I'm, I'm not I'm just simply not. But I, I feel like oh the God. the whatever you can do to remind yourself of 
who you are Mm -hmm. outside of motherhood like obviously this is now this is now a part this is your life Mm -hmm. but whatever you can do i don't care drop that baby off with their grandparents or something and go get your nails done maybe something something anything Mm -hmm. make a cup of coffee that like make a latte like make it cute make it nice like do something i don't know because i'm not a mom so what the fuck am i even talking about (laughs) but like i just feel like that's what I would I would hope that somebody who loves me in my life, whether it be, you know, my baby daddy or my my parents or something, my a friend would come over and be like, you know what? Go take a bath. Go take a bath, baby. I got this. Yeah, go get, get that throw up. Go get hair. that throw up out your hair, sweetie. Yeah, sweetie. Go do yeah. that. But it's easy for us to it's say because we don't have to, kids. We have kids. I feel like um I think something that I've heard from like new moms is like a little struggle with your bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, yeah, I don't have a, I've not had a child and I don't know what that experience is, but like, bestie, mm-hmm. your body really carried you and this new life for nine months. Do you see what your body did? Do you see what your body did? Like, baby, you really did that. Mm. You literally yes. brought life into this world. Yes. Like, your body is a freaking temple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You better magic. see it. Magic. Literal magic. Literal magic. You better see it as that untreated as such. Yes. yes. And, like, your body has reasons and seasons, and right now it just did what it had to do. Mm-hmm. It gave birth. It gave life. Mm-hmm. And baby, celebrate that. And give yourself some time. Give yourself some time, This baby. snapback culture is toxic as fuck. Fuck. Yeah, okay, yeah. So Kylie Jenner and all these people snapped back because yes. they got surgery. Yes. It wasn't working out for six <laughs> months. They were like, no, sweetheart, that is not yes. that is not working yes. out. That is surgery. That's a lot of people, though. That's a lot of celebrities. Yeah. And then they come back and they do a People magazine cover. And, and everyone's like, like, snap back after oh three months. Oh, my God, no. No. That's not, that is not the normal that is not the norm that is not the average it's we're not, not gonna like pretend as though that is snapping reality. back is the reality it's not it's not the reality it's not. for for 99 percent of people <laughs> so like looking at that and feeling badly about yourself is just not conducive to anything no. at all but no. i agree like have you ever seen childbirth in real life girl i did i passed out oh <laughs> I was not expecting like, you to say that. <laughs> was it all natural? It was all natural. Mm. I passed out. Mm. You know, literally. I. It, oh. You know, I thought everybody was like, it's bringing life and it's different. Oh my God. It is different. But I was so into it. I thought it was the most incredible thing that I had ever seen in my life. I was literally standing for like a full bird's eye view. I was like, like, oh ah. shit. It's going <laughs> down. Because just to watch the way that our bodies are able to do the things that they do. Yeah. Is insane. I think, yeah, I think it's the insanity that like overwhelmed me to the, I was yeah. like, my mind was mm-hmm. like, we can't take any more. Mm-hmm. Pass mm-hmm. out and take care of yourself yeah. on the ground. <laughs> okay. Yes. I couldn't, but it's insane. It's yes. amazing yes. that yes. our bodies can do that. And to even think that I would be able to do that at some point. Mm-hmm. Give me time. Mm-hmm. Give me time. Yes, give me time. <laughs> give me time. But I think even even in that same breath, like for people who are still trying to become more confident with their quarantine bodies, yeah, your body got you through a pandemic, a, a, a whole pandere- yes. ponder replay, baby. Period. Like a whole pandemonium. A pandemonium. It took care of yourself. It did what it had to do. Yes. Yes. Love your body, yes. baby. Appreciate it. You know, put put on something little cute. Mm-hmm. Whoever's listening to this, go put something cute on mm-hmm. and stretch yourself in that house immediately Period. if not i'm coming through the podca- podcast <laughs> and i'm coming to fight you i'm, I'm coming to fight on you my way i'm outside i'm, on, I'm outside your i'm house. pulling up i'm pulling up i just want to talk to you i just, just want to talk out. to you just, just come out just a little bit just <laughs> but it's so true it's so true like we have to give ourselves some grace straight up every once in a while and when you're ready you will get back to what you want to get back to yeah you will reach that goal and you will get there but like for now Chill the fuck out. Chill out, baby. Sit down. Breathe. Unclench your jaw, too. Don't clench your jaw. Just chill. Relax your shoulders. Relax your shoulders. Deep breath in. Out. (sighs) You've got this. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I know this is an ASMR section of the um, podcast. No, I'm just kidding. We don't have that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We don't have that. That's not in the budget. Um, (laughs) 
There's so many great questions, and I really wish that we could get to all of them. Mm. We are running out of time, Sadness which in my I heart. feel like I know. I feel like we could do this. Could be a three hour episode. A three hour episode because we could talk for forever. Five ever. Really quickly, because you said you are dating right now. Yep. Some people have been asking about how to kind of regain your confidence post breakup, and yeah. now you're in a healthy, happy relationship. You're happy. Yes. But you've been in a relationship before that kind of brought you down very down so how did you what did you do or like were there any like mantras that you told yourself or is there any like go-to thing that you that personally worked for you to be able to bounce back after a breakup yeah it took me a while before i actually got back to dating and i think it was e- it felt easy to be like i'm just gonna date somebody else mm-hmm. that was easy and i did that and it was very bad it was very toxic i kept on comparing this person to my to the last person that i was with i was like but he's not like this he's not like this he's not like this mm-hmm. and that was toxic because then this person could not live up to this expectation i had in my head yeah and i feel like you know after that breakup it's hard it's difficult but maybe you need to get back to you Mm -hmm. you need to get back to you and whether that is freaking three months three years however long you literally need to do that yeah and that could look like so many different things for me it was therapy i had to go to therapy i had to like really process these feelings of trauma and like these feelings of like being broken literally it felt like i i had nothing going for myself and that was a lie yeah and so i would advise like you know getting back to yourself whether whatever that means you know taking a step back from certain things and just being by yourself and like learning how you are as a single person Mm -hmm. before you get into that relationship and that really helped me realize what i like and what i don't like what i want and what i don't want what i'm gonna give my energy to and what i'm not and like that really helps you in getting into another relationship if that's what you want where it is the love the energy the vibes are so it's so natural it's it's like mm. it's so reciprocated it's natural you don't have to work towards anything it's just there yeah and with like a healthy relationship like i've had my ups and downs <laughs> uh but like haven't we all haven't child? we all baby. Have mercy um but it's kind of like just like bringing yourself to the table and realizing that like i say this with anything a job a relationship a friendship i am the prize mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. am the freaking price and so are you baby like you can't be out there thinking and waiting like oh I hope this person likes me I hope they do no baby do yes. you like them yes do you want to dedicate your time to this person do you want to take time out of your day to be with this person you know your energy your love your your immaculate love and all these things to this person like is that what you want to do question that right. before you put yourself in a situation where you might get hurt right or you might not get the the energy that you wanted yes um and right now it's all about communication y'all i say what's on my mind i'm like this is how i feel i was upset that this is what happened i'm upset that this is what you did da, da, da. if somebody can't accept me at that point in my life then you don't deserve me yeah period 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 no that's that's exactly right mm-hmm. see i'm like mm. i'm mm-hmm. just thinking about my own shit yeah. like, damn. <laughs> because they will really they will really try it but you know the whole reason why i wanted to do this self-love episode which i feel yes. like we've talked on so many different topics but yes. this podcast is obviously called relationship mm-hmm. and i think when people think about that you know we think about all the outside relationships that we have but the most important relationship that you have in this entire world is the relationship you have with yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that is why we're talking about this Literally. that is why we are here in this moment and who better than a chang to give us la, la, la. the real tea okay yes. i love you so much I thank you so for much. thank you for doing this thank you for being here i girl. feel like i could go outside and fly i don't know <laughs> fly out this way. no girl <laughs> thank you beautiful. for for having me like listen i'm obsessed with you i look up to you inspire me on so many levels cami so like i'm pumped that i was able to be a part of this this little cute podcast no, 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 I'm not gonna say little cute because I ain't gonna say anything little about Cammy. This oh. big ass podcast, this bomb ass shit. With the Period. popping peas in the back. <laughs> I love Period. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank love. you. And we gonna you gotta come back. Ah, we're gonna be here. We got more to talk about. We're gonna be in the streets together. We're gonna be in the streets frolicking. For a frolicking. Okay. Keep your eyes out. <laughs> You'll see us. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening and. I hope you feel as great as I do because, child, I don't. You know, I got a man, but I feel like I could go out and pull pull a few. Okay, I could do. I pull anybody. 
All right. I hope Love you guys it. all enjoyed it. And um, we'll talk to you next time. Blessings. Bye. Bye. I'm Cami Crawford, host of the Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen.